Hi friends, today I'm going to review a video from FallenInfo.net. It's about interviews with real people who practice Fallen Dafa meditation and how the practice changed their lives. Let's watch. People of various ages, ethnicities and backgrounds slowly begin to fill up the otherwise empty park. They move quietly into a circle. With their eyes closed, perform graceful slow movements following meditation music from a loudspeaker placed in the middle. I think in the US a lot of people think it's um, basically strictly a Chinese thing, but it involves meditation, probably. Some persecuted group, and maybe you have to wear a yellow t-shirt to do it. Yellow t-shirt? Oh, come on, folks! I always do the exercises in blue shirt. It works pretty well for me. For the last 20 years, you've heard journalists talking about them on the TV and radio. You've seen them holding rallies and peace protests around the world. They're practitioners of Falun Gong. In the 90s, Falun Gong grew rapidly and was celebrated throughout China. By 1999, 100 million Chinese practiced. Yes, Falun Dafa was massively popular in China during the 90s. First of all, because it improved people's health. It was spread by volunteers. It's free to learn, it's free to continue practicing. So just people spread the word. The third reason was that Falun Dafa is emphasizing self-cultivation which is the main concept behind traditional Chinese culture. They emphasize that we have to cultivate our moral character, improve our minds and our hearts through spiritual discipline so we can eliminate all these self-serving desires, uh, attachments to the human world, so ultimately we can achieve a, a state of purity and go back to heaven, become divine. One day when I was in the bookstore in the Chinese history section, I came across the book Falun Gong, which had been kind of miscategorized and put in the wrong place. So when I when I picked up the book and I started looking through it, I was like, wow, this is this looks like what I'm looking for actually. It's it's that energy related practice rather than martial arts. So I, uh, I took it home and that night I just read it cover to cover. It was, it was mind blowing. I'd say many people who just started practicing Falun Dafa feel the same. I certainly felt the same when I started practicing many years ago. And I think the reason is that the book discusses many foundational principles of the human body, life, the universe, and also discusses many big questions in life, like what's the purpose of life? why do people suffer, why we go through trials, tribulations, hardships in life, and it gives you a completely new perspective and a new outlook on life. It all started to come into focus that I'd actually seen practitioners on my campus at college exercising, and I was like, oh, that's what they're doing over there. Uh, so then the next day I went out and met up with them, and they taught me the exercises. Um, I was doing the, the third exercise where you bring your hands past your eyes, and my eyes were closed, but when I did this, there's like a really bright light <laughs> every time my hands went past my eyes, and I was like, I was shocked. I was like, <laughs> my heart started pounding really quick. I was like, this is real, like the, the energy is actually real. Mm, interesting. I don't remember having similar sensations at the very beginning, but I do remember that eventually I, I did experience some interesting sensations. Like, for example, when I was doing the fifth exercise of Falun Dafa, the meditation exercise one time, I felt a warm current from the top of my head rushing through my whole body and at that point I thought wow the energy that the practice is talking about is real. I mean I had done a lot of meditation in my life but after this I never felt lighter in my entire life. I The experience is it's almost hard to describe but I felt like I was floating and I remember walking away from the park back to I was living in New York City at the time back to the subway and I just, the whole time, I just felt like my feet were barely touching the ground. I just was floating. And I said, I need you, I need to learn more. I want to know everything about this. That's awesome. Even I, that weigh about 100 kilos, I feel so much lighter after doing the exercises. But quick disclaimer, Falun Dafa is not a rapid weight loss program. In China, it was very mainstream. And this kind of practice has been part of their culture for a very long time. There's a, a physical element, like, kind of like you might find in yoga, and then there's a spiritual element. 
and this is an ancient um, kind of practice you would find in China and throughout Asia for thousands of years. Exactly. Most Qigong practices in China mainly emphasize the physical aspect, these energy exercises that help you improve your health. In contrast, Falun Dafa emphasized self-cultivation, which is the spiritual development, the essence of traditional Chinese culture, and that's why many Chinese people felt that they connected with the essence of their culture, uh, and things that have been almost lost in China over decades of political movements like the Cultural Revolution that really targeted to eradicate these traditional values and ideas from society. It wasn't the specifics of what I was reading that drew me to it. It was, it was the perspective he was coming from that felt so complete and compassionate and strong and authoritative. You can only be that strong when you know something that well. And, and as I read, I was only being reaffirmed more and more why there was so much confidence behind the words I was reading. I remember the first time I read the book, I felt a sense of connection with the material because, well, it might sound ridiculous now, but when I was a young boy, I used to watch the show Dragon Ball, which was a very popular show for little boys at my uh, age. And, uh, well, it was really amazing because this character was based on Monkey King, which is a character from the Chinese novel Journey to the West, and many of the things that they show in Dragon Ball, they're concepts and ideas from Chinese culture. So Goku was very truthful, compassionate, and he was trying to improve his martial arts skills, and the more he was challenging himself, the more he would increase his energy. Eventually he would go to heaven, meet with divine beings, develop supernormal abilities, and when I read the book, some of the things felt very familiar. I had been spending a lot of money traveling to all these different courses and studying all these different things from iridology to acupuncture, other forms of Qigong, and I was spending a lot of money. And I thought for sure tomorrow they were going to start charging for this. So I started printing everything off that I, I could and took it home and read it. <laughs> this is pretty typical behavior from the days when internet was young. You know, remember these days? I'm not sure if you're old enough, but when we were trying to get online back in that day, we used to use these dial-up modems that were doing this sound. <laughs> and then you wait for a few minutes to get online. And then I was so happy for getting online and maybe see some free content from all kinds of sites, maybe NBA or Formula One or maybe a page about dinosaurs and I would download all the pictures and the text because it was for free. <laughs> but anyway, like, he didn't need to worry about Falun Dafa stuff being taken down because they're always for free. I remember when I first practiced, I went to the park and a practitioner told me how to do the exercise. After that, he didn't ask me about my name or my contact information. All the, all the practitioners at the spot just smile at each other and they pick up their bag and they left. And I was like, because I was a little nervous, I was, how refreshing, because it's not like everybody <laughs> trying to get your contact information, ask you when you're gonna come next time. Yeah, that sounds pretty much like my experience when I first joined the class. It was a very pleasant environment, very laid back, just regular people practicing together. And later, of course, I understood that because it's a spiritual practice, you need to want to engage with it. It needs to come from your heart. There's no point for anyone to coerce you to join. It's not some kind of I don't know, membership in the gym where you go there, you try their class and they try to sign you up. The way I was in life before picking up the practice is that when I was very diplomatic, and I don't mean that necessarily in a good way, I'd walk into a room and I would kind of change my personality, what I was advocating for or not, depending on who's in the room. I don't want to ruffle any feathers, this kind of thing. And it, it always bothered me. One of the things I noticed in myself after studying the principles of Falun Gong is that change. I could walk into a room and be very comfortable first starting from a principle standpoint. What do I think is right here? What do I think is wrong? And even if everybody in the room is sort of against it or I look up to them and I don't want to, you know, perhaps offend them, I was much more natural. It wasn't something I had to force. It was very sort of natural to say, folks, here's where I think we stand. And that's, it sounds like a simple thing, but it's tremendously liberating. Fantastic. 
well, after a few years of cultivation, I realized that well, cultivation is about eliminating human attachments. And when people hear attachments, they might think about really bad desires, really selfish desires. But actually, there are other things you need to think about, like maybe small fears you have or weird thoughts or annoying habits that make your life more difficult. These are also things you need to get rid of. And I guess what Falun Dafa offers ultimately are these immutable standards that help you judge for yourself, help you judge what's wrong and what's uh, right. And then you can make your own mind instead of just trying to fit in with other people. And when you do that, it's tremendously liberating. So that's all for this video. See you next time.